Welcome back to the studio. Another segment of these little mushroom cap mold experiences and experiments. Let's see what happens. Let's open this kiln and see what we have today. All right, so our plan was, uh, you know, if you keep doing something the same way and keep getting the same results, you have to change something. So we changed the kiln that we fired these in. So now we're working with a five inch circle and a five inch, five petaled flower sort of shape. I think we have a little more drop here, but th look, this one's diagonal, which I find interesting because the coils in this kiln go this way. You would think if there were more heat this way, you know, that it would be more evenly uh, draped. And this one, uh, I don't really know what's going on there, uh, other than it's not exactly what we want. So we've got this kind of cool flower shape, but it's not very uniform. And I know flowers are organic and they're not always uniform, but this is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a more uniform drape. You look at it this way. See how these have start, started to conform to the mold and this little hump has not. So uh, we're going to redo these one again. Again, I can't believe it. But, you know, and then this one, uh, we're pretty much with the round shape, we're getting a very consistent little just taco, just not as tight a taco this time. And I would have thought this kiln with bigger chamber, more coils would have been hotter and maybe would have conformed this glass to the mold a little bit tighter, but that's not the case. So we tried three different firings. We tried three different sizes of glass. We tried two different kilns. What's left? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. So. I thought about it, and actually Nikki said something the other day about hold, and I thought to myself, maybe the solution would be to hold the glass at a lower temperature for a few minutes so the entire thing becomes soft, and then it drapes more evenly. So we have a brand new firing program, and we're going to go back to the original kiln because I don't think changing kilns improved anything for us. So I feel like the test would be better, um, you know, would be a better solution, a better, um, you know, overall experiment if we go back to the original kiln. I am so confident with this next firing that we are going to do that I'm going to prepare three of these little star shapes, we call them stars because they kind of look like stars, but our little flower shapes, because my intention is to try to make flowers with these mushroom cat molds. So I want to make something that has a different shape than just round. So I'm going to, I'm so confident that this new firing guide that I'm going to use is going to work that I'm going to make three pieces of glass with color on them. Now I could cut this out of a single color, like a blue or a pink or a, a red or whatever, but I want my flowers to be, have a transition, have like, I'm thinking morning glories, that's my inspiration. So I've got all different shades of blue here. I have sky blue, turquoise blue, deep aqua, dark blue, navy, and aventurine. I have them in order of lightest to darkest. I don't always do this, but a lot of times I will put the lightest freight down first because you can put dark on top of it, but you can't put light on top of dark if it's a transparent color. And this blue, and this blue, and this one, these three, and this one actually are all transparent colors. This is the only one here that's an opal. So that'll show up on anything. But I'm gonna do them in this order. So I'm gonna spread lay these back out over here again. Now, when I'm working with the powder fret, I like to wear a dust mask, so uh, you may have a little trouble hearing me. And this is called a sifter. You put your material in here, it only works with the powder material, but it has a screen, and I'm going to use it to apply the fret evenly all the way around the flower. And what I plan to do is go light to dark in the center, kind of gradiate it in. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh boy, there we are. Okay, I've got a spoon. I'm going to take my powder blue. Now, these, I want these to be sort of, you know, you know, when we work uh, artistically, we like to uh, work in threes, odd numbers. So that's why I have three flowers. I'm being liberal there with that. Because I like to try to hide the clear glasses underneath. With a little more right there. I know these are kind of pale and difficult for you to see, but I'll just tell you that they're fabulous. They're just beautiful and they're gonna be so colorful. At least I hope so. I'm working on a white piece of paper because when you work with powder, it's kind of hard to clean up because it's so fine. So if I work on paper, when I'm done, I'll just roll this paper up and put it in the garbage. It saves some uh, cleanup time and saves having to vacuum and 
saves having that powder on your work table, which kind of feels, you know, icky on your feet, and icky on your hands, rather. Okay, I'm gonna need a little more frit in there. So I hope you can kind of see this blue. Now, powder frit always looks a lot lighter in the jar than it really is. So if you're not sure what color you have, it's a good idea to go look at a larger frit size um, and or, uh, you know, compare your color to, um, you know, the sheet size or larger frit size. Now this is an opal, it's a medium blue. Put that in the middle. I may not even get to some of these other colors because the deep aqua, I don't know if that's going to show up on this color. See how all these three powders look the same? They're really very different. This is twice as dark as this one, and this one's opal, but all three of those look the same. So it's important that you know your material when you're working with powder frit because it can be very confusing. All right, so I'm trying to keep the light around the perimeter and this dark more towards the center. And because these are not going to be capped with anything, I can put pretty much as much frit on here as I want to. All right, so what color is that deep aqua? I don't know if we want to do that or the dark blue. Or they maybe go to the navy. Oh my God, I don't know. All right, I'm going to go with the dark blue. I'm going to skip that one. All right, now how, here I'm going to just tap. Get that dark blue kind of to the center. And maybe bring it out towards the flower petals. Isn't that so pretty? Okay, bring that out. So tapping helps kind of, shaking it makes it go left and right. Tapping it kind of makes it go straight down. And you look at this, I have my frit all to one side. I really want it more in the middle so that it kind of goes down more uniformly. There we go. That's a little bit better. Oh, they're getting lots of frit there. I need a little more over here, I think. Okay, now I've got this on this one. Oops, I got a little carried away there. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary around here. Always getting carried away with something. Okay, now let's take the navy. All right, this we're just going to, oh, you know what I'm going to do? Hold on, I'm going to grab a different size sifter over here. I grab this little itty bitty. See that? So I can get more control over where this goes. I got it pretty full. Okay, just tap in the middle there. Tap in the middle over here. Tap in the middle over here. All right, let's see. Huh, I think, I know I want some aventurine blue on this. So let's go ahead and pull some of that out. Okay, I'm gonna take a little of this aventurine blue and just sprinkle it like salt and pepper over the middle. I'm going to fire these to um, a light tack fuse temperature because I want to retain the shape of these little stars. If we go too hot, they'll shrink up and I won't have that shape. So we want to kind of retain that. A little more here. That's kind of the center of the flower. I want that a little bit deeper in color. Okay. And now I have this, I added this pretty deep aqua that we had in this powder form, but I decided I'm going to use it in um, this medium form and just kind of sprinkle a little bit on the tips of those petals. Oh boy, this is fun getting into the creative, artistic aspect of this project because so far we've been doing a lot of experimenting. And although that's valuable, it's very valuable for future, but gosh, you get to a point where it's like, darn it, just let me make something pretty. You know, I got all these clear little crazy little things I'm going to have to figure out what to do with. I might end up making some sort of weird fountain for my yard with all those uh, pieces that we slumped. I don't know. We certainly just can't break them up. We have to figure out something interesting to do with them. And if you have any suggestions, let me know. I want to let you guys know that you guys have been um, terrific. Terrific about responding to the blog and responding to our videos and giving us comments and suggestions. And a lot of these ideas come from you, so thank you so much. Keep participating. We really appreciate it. It makes Nikki and I excited and happy to make new and more projects for you. So keep that up. 
So I've got a couple, some of the subjects we've already done have been suggestions. Some of the ones coming up have been suggestions. So thank you so much for your feedback. We appreciate it. All right, so we're ready to load these in the kiln on the molds. I went ahead and reprimed these molds because they were showing you little signs of wear. So if you want to know how to prime a mold, I already went over that in a couple of my other uh, videos. So go ahead and check those out. Uh, we'll have a little post-it on here showing you where those are and how to find them. So we'll go ahead and put these on the uh, molds. Bring the round one over here, centering it nicely. The star-shaped one, rotate this a little bit. So the star shape matches the star shape of the mold. There we go. All right, so we are up to program firing number four. So I've been taking notes all along. This is very messy. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in one of the vlogs all written out nice and neat for you. So it's mushroom cap mold challenge to make uniform flowers. So we have program, uh, we program number two on this kiln, this 14 inch kiln, and this is what we did. Uh, not draped enough. We did it again with smaller pieces of glass, still not, uh, still too lopsided, darn. And then the last one, better, but still not what I want. So what we're doing differently this time, we're back to the original kiln. I increased this firing program to have, uh, what does it have? It had two segments before, it had three segments, it now has five. So what I have done is I added a hold at 1,000 degrees. So it's going to go 300 to 1,000, hold for 10. It's going to go 300 to 1,200, hold for 10. And then 500 to 1,235, hold for 10. And then it'll go down to the annealing temperature, hold for 40. And then down to 300, 300 degrees, down to 800, hold for 10. So I added two more segments. My hope is those two holds will soften the entire piece of glass so that before it starts to drape, it's all soft and uniform in texture and in viscosity. That's a fun word, right? Viscosity. So that they, it drapes more evenly. So that's my hope. So I'm so hopeful that that will work that I went ahead and decorated some little star shapes because we're gonna, once this comes out and they're fabulous and we love it, we're gonna go ahead and um, slump some pieces that look like little flowers over there. Okay, so I'm really hopeful that this is gonna turn out the way we planned this time and we can move forward. I wanna thank all of you for participating in my t-shirt design challenge and um, giveaway. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your input. I love your feedback. I love that you're participating. We really appreciate that you're paying attention to what we're doing here and responding to it and enjoying it. So thank you for that. I'd like to announce that Patricia I is the winner of that awesome t-shirt and the winning t-shirt is do what you love, which I can totally get behind all the time, doing what you love. So thank you so much, everyone. Everybody that participated is going to get an I Love Fusing sticker. So we're going to reach out to you and get your contact information and send that to you as soon as we can. So thank you so much for participating. We really appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, this segment of my vlog, and I hope you'll, you know, looking forward to the next one, just like we are. We're looking forward to filming it for you. So until next time, please like, share, follow, um, you know, let your friends, if you're enjoying yourselves, if you're enjoying what we're, the content we're giving you, let your friends know and share it with them as well. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, until ha next time, happy fusing.